Uh, Mr. Speaker, let me begin by saying that this House shall fight for devolution. You know, it's a bit hypocritical that in this era we are talking about devolution, devolving funds to our counties, talking about accountability. Senator Yet, Fernandez, Mr. Speaker, may the Senator for Naro it be seems, in silence. It seems as, as though the national government, perpetuated by the National Assembly, is eager to make sure that they deny county governments money. Mr. Speaker, the distinguished senator from Mandera and his committee have continuously reminded this House that when it comes to the issues of resources, all of us must stand firm and reject in totality the work which is done by the National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, our county governments have got roads, you know, feeder roads. We talk about a county like Narok, which is one of the counties that feeds this nation. Our road, our feeder roads, we produce almost 80% of the wheat in this country. Our feeder roads are dilapidated. And now, Mr. Speaker, the National Assembly comes in and decides those additional grants, they are not worth it. Seriously, I think somebody has got to drill some sense into the minds of our colleagues in the National Assembly who are really negating on their role of representation. It doesn't matter whether you represent citizens from the National Assembly or from the county. Ultimately, the county governments are the ones that will develop this nation. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to beseech all of us that the road maintenance levy fund is very, very important. This is a fund that has continued to help our communities. I can see, I to, you okay? All right. So I think all of us sitting here, you need to remember Article 123, you vote by delegation. You need to remember that if you come here and not think about your county, your county will continue suffering. As long as I'm here and God has given me air to breathe, I will always make sure that I fight for more monies to go to my counties. Because I want to see roads from Mount Narok being repaired. When you go there, you'll find that counties will tell you, we have no money to fix these roads. Because the, county, the National Assembly has removed these roads. So this is the time that we now redefine devolution. What is devolution? Every time we sit here and we lament, and then when a motion comes from the National Assembly, we are quick to pass it. This is an opportunity for us to be able to put our foot down, even for those who will go into mediation, because I want to persuade all of us here that we reject those amendments in totality. When you go into mediation, you put your foot down, because we, if, we, if we cannot fix our county government's roads, then what else are we doing? Mr. Speaker, there are counties that are still struggling to be able to build their county headquarters. There are grants there to support these counties to be able to complete these county headquarters. There are counties also that, I remember Senator Faki came here, we moved a motion, we agreed to allocate Mombasa, few more resources for them to be able to build their spots complex there. I think we need to ask ourselves whether everything should be concentrated in the national government and what impact that will have in the communities. We talk about all funds, you know, come into the issue of uh, revenue share. They want to reduce that. Division of revenue, you know, I've never seen anywhere where we are talking about um, amendments when there is a law which is in existence. You know, now our counties are crying. They have no money for anything. Sometimes you find that even, doc even the doctors are going on strike. And then when you follow the doctor, the, the governors will tell you, we have no money to pay them. You know? So if we are not diligent and very careful in our work, we will be sitting here and warming our chairs here. So from today, I want to beseech all of you that any time when you see a bill coming from 
the National Assembly that has got to do with resources. Think of it as a problem and you have a hammer. You know? And think of it as a nail. Just hammer it down. Poop! So that we can move forward knowing that these distinguished men and women will fight for their counties. If we do not fight for our counties, even the future generations will laugh at us. What were all those old men doing there? You know? They'll be pointing at the bullfighter and saying, bullfighter, you know, what were you fighting for if you could not be able to help me get a road? Do you know, Mr. Speaker, yesterday I saw a statistics of how many houses are built out of mud in this country. It was very sad that my own county of Narok, 60% of homesteads are built out of mud. You know, when are we going to be able to leapfrog and do away with Stone Age issues. You know? Our forefathers lived in mud houses. Even us now in the 21st century, we are still wearing good designer suits and everything, and our people are still living in mud houses. Come on. You know, there's a ripple effect. If the road is bad, there's no development in that area. You know? If there are no money to build county headquarters, people will just be living there, not thinking about how to develop. So in a few words, Mr. Speaker, it is imperative that all of us here, and especially head of delegations, when you're sitting down, you should have a clear picture of your county. In fact, when you sit there, in all your urban areas, you should have a spatial plan. What does my county look like? How many buildings are there? How many roads are there? You know, if you go to your sub-counties, how many feeder roads are there? That is when you will know that it behooves you to fight hard so that not a single penny is deducted from those funds. You cannot remove those funds. You know, recently, Mr. Speaker, we were being told that in the budget committee of the National Assembly that our, our colleagues there will make sure that their constituencies have a lot of money, you know, and they'll fight for it. You know, I'm sure my sister, Paris, was uh, a member of parliament back then. She would be like, she'd want to be in that budget committee to make sure that some money goes to Kajiado. You know, but now, my sister, you are here in the Senate. You know, those people will still want money for themselves. Now you, what will happen to you? They will deduct the little money which is going into counties. So unless we are all cognizant of the fact that we are here, to fight for our counties, you know, we will end up being a laughing stock. So, this is the time when we break the protocol and come up with hearts, and I'm willing to sponsor, that says reject. And you just sit down there and you say reject. Finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to remind all those who I'm sure I believe will eventually go to the mediation committee that you have a duty. When you go back home and you drive your car, you're lucky you can drive an SUV. There are those people who are stuck in a pro box or in a border border, in a dilapidated road. Your SUV will be able to go through, but think of yourself as that person who has been bundled up in a pro box, or there are like three or four people in a motorbike who are going through bombs and bombs and bombs. Think about their generations, whether there'll be any. Thank you, Mr.